energy is the main driver in today's economy, and it's why we focus on it so much here at Rocklogic. It's needed to travel, produce, and ship goods, and it has directly caused a dramatic rise in the global standard of living in the past century. Add in telecommunications, and the economy easily gets 100 times more globally connected with millions of new opportunities. And 5G is at the forefront of the telecommunications frontier. But what exactly is 5G? Who are the big players? And why should you care? I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host, Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button, put a comment below, literally about anything you want. This tells YouTube to share a video with more people and hopefully gets more people educated and enthusiastic about the really cool tech we discuss on the show. Now, today we're going to be talking about global connectivity as it pertains to infrastructure development. Like many Americans, I've been working from home for almost a year and would never have been possible without me having having access to decent internet. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who do not have access to decent internet, and there are those who live in rural areas whose only option is satellite internet, where you're charged over $200 a month for speeds comparable to 90s dial-up, with monthly data caps, which if you exceed, the company will throttle your internet to be even slower. There's been a great deal of talk in recent years regarding to wireless 5G. Some are even touting it as the future of internet connectivity. But what is it? To put it simply, the telecom industry refers to 5G as the fifth generation technology standard for wireless broadband devices. As the successor to 4G you see in mobile devices today, it is expected to be 100 times faster, but that isn't the whole story. It's also expected to be far more spectrally efficient in comparison to its predecessor, and more bandwidth opens up many more opportunities. Unlike 4G, this technology won't be limited to phones and other mobile devices. The increase in bandwidth means that wireless providers can provide internet connectivity with speeds comparable to, if not even faster than your local cable company. More competition means better service at lower prices. If that wasn't enough, this technology has the ability to be integrated into other technologies, self-driving cars that talk to each other to prevent collisions, artificially intelligent drones that deliver goods on time without fail. There are even applications in the medical field for preventative care. Like any game-changing tech, you need a significant amount of investment, development, and infrastructure in order for it to work. And several companies have been developing 5G technology for years. However, one company has taken the lead. And that company is Huawei. It was founded in the late 80s by Ren Xinfei, a former deputy director in the People's Liberation Army, as head of the Engineering Corps. Using his connections over the years, the company grew into one of the largest providers of mobile devices, as well as global telecommunications technology. Huawei has done so well that it has surpassed Ericsson in 2012 as the world's largest telecommunications equipment manufacturer, and in 2020 surpassed Apple and Samsung as the largest supplier of smartphones. Today, they have grown to 194,000 employees and operate in over 170 countries. But what's led to this massive growth? Well, Sheng Fei's experience in the PLA has given him many high power connections. His influence allowed Huawei to receive billions from the Chinese government to develop the technology and subsidize them to the point where all competitors around the globe are priced out. And in spite of growing security concerns from the U.S. and other Western nations, the company has been undeterred in its commercial rollout of 5G technology. But why is Huawei so determined in this serious undertaking? The CCP isn't exactly the most transparent when it has come to speech and the control of information. Right now, within Chinese borders, the Communist Party has complete control over how the internet is used and monitors all traffic going in and out through a system called the Great Firewall. Not only can they prevent certain websites and social media companies from coming through, but they can monitor traffic to the point where they can track down and detain citizens from conducting what the government considered subversive activity. Because of this, a Chinese government-backed company, being the largest player in the telecommunications industry, has me concerned. The Chinese government wants complete control over the market, and it looks like they will use the same tactics used to take over the rare earth elements industry to take over as the sole provider of 5G infrastructure globally. In fact, the Chinese government has dedicated so much financial and intellectual resources to the sector that they have over 1,500 patents and proprietary tech related to it. Other telecom companies such as Samsung, Ericsson, and Qualcomm 
don't even come close. With some saying that 5G will serve as the central nervous system of the 21st century economy, whoever controls that infrastructure will control the world. And with the Chinese government desiring to filter and funnel any information it deems harmful, letting that control be in their hands may lead to serious geopolitical repercussions. Now, I want to be clear. This episode is not meant to scare people, but rather raise awareness to what's going on. And if you're still tuned in at this point, you may be asking, if there are any companies looking to compete that stand a chance. As a matter of fact, yes. Unless you haven't had access to the internet in the last two decades, you probably heard of a little company called SpaceX, founded by Elon Musk with the intention to radically reduce spaceflight costs by developing multi-stage reusable rockets. Oh, what? You live in a country that doesn't have access to the internet? Well, fear not, because Elon's got you covered. In 2015, Musk started Starlink, a subsidiary of SpaceX that is developing advanced compact satellites that can deliver ultra-fast wireless broadband service on a global scale. Space internet is not a new concept. However, with traditional rockets and traditional production methods of communication satellites, companies have only been able to send maybe a few up at extremely high altitudes. Because of the distance that signals have to travel, speeds are slow and bandwidth is extremely limited. What Starlink aims to do is three things. Manufacture its own satellites using new tech to decrease costs and maximize effectiveness. Send thousands of satellites at varying orbits to reduce latency issues. And launching on reusable rockets for free to reduce costs. By doing all this, SpaceX is aiming to have Starlink provide gigabit internet speeds to anyone anywhere around the world at the lowest cost. All you need is a dish the size of a small pizza box and a clear view of the sky, and you're all set. Now, at the time of this recording, SpaceX only has 1,000 satellites in orbit with plans to launch up to 42,000 satellites before the end of the 2020s. It's not enough to provide full coverage yet, but right now, several beta testers in rural communities in North America have tried it out, and the connections even at this stage have been good enough to stream Netflix. But speed isn't the only thing. Yes, the delivery method is crucial to providing fast speed internet without the need to build out miles of fiber optic cable connections. However, bandwidth is just as important, if not more so. So yes, it's great for people in rural towns or suburban communities, but you need a delivery method to make it effective in a dense urban population center. Otherwise, I'm stuck with Time Warner Spectrum and their subpar customer service till the day I die. Artemis Wireless is a technology company founded by former Apple engineer Steve Perlman. In 2015, they announced a radical development in software-based radio technology called P-Cell. This technology is capable of delivering wireless data at speeds that are hundreds of times faster than conventional wireless communications methods, even under conditions of heavy usage or interference. You see, conventional cell towers transmit signals that avoid interfering with each other to create large cells. Thousands of devices can operate within this cell to gain a portion of the wireless spectrum. But with Artemis technology, radios transmit signals that deliberately interfere with each other, combining to synthesize tiny P cells for each individual user. So no matter how many people are in the same area, they each have full access to the spectrum with limited to no quality loss. If that wasn't impressive enough, P cell radios can be daisy chain through ducted cables and installed almost anywhere at low cost without the requirements for special permits. So the result is complete blanket 5G coverage in any major city where every user has complete access to the full spectrum. The application of this level of access is limitless. It won't quite be ready for prime time and the company has been relatively quiet for the last few years as it continues to develop and test the technology, but so far it's looking really promising. This changes the game on so many levels. Not only will people without access gain it for the first time, but it also changes the way the internet has been delivered globally. Right now, the major continents of the world get their internet through several fiber optic connections and undersea cables. Those cables transmit data at high speeds to various data centers throughout the world. China's Great Firewall works by funneling that data and blocking sites and information it deems a threat. But if everyone on Earth has access to this high-speed network with nothing more than a small dish and an Ethernet cable, then the CCP will have a tougher time censoring the data that travels in and out of their country. China is very concerned about this 
this so much that in addition to banning satellite dishes on people's homes, the Chinese government is looking to launch its own satellite internet program to compete. It's even looking to shoot down Starlink satellites if SpaceX intends to violate CCP laws. Thankfully, we recently formed a new branch of the military here in the United States, one with the laser focus objective to protect civilian and military assets and infrastructure in space. But that will be a topic for another episode. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic.